Hi, my name's Winter Roth. I'm the current president of the Prison Education Awareness Club that we lovingly refer to as PEACE. I'm gonna be your guys' host today and I wanna welcome everyone to our eighth annual Prison Education Awareness Conference. I've been an officer in the club for two years now. I help to put on both the seventh and eighth annual conferences. And putting on these conferences takes a lot of support, which we receive from our club advisor, Dr. Corey Wells, other club officers who, will be, who you'll be hearing from throughout the day and partnerships within the university. I wanna quickly thank the Department of English, the School of Mathematical and Statistical Sciences, the School of Social Transformation and Undergraduate Student Government for providing funding and support for this year's conference. It would not have been possible without any of them. And then I had a few quick housekeeping notes for everyone before we jump in. Um, throughout the day, we're gonna be taking photo photos and the whole conference is gonna be video recorded. Um, so we do need you to fill out a photo release form. They're at the front and we're also going to distribute them during lunch. So if you haven't signed one, just make sure you sign one and before you step out for the day, please drop them off at the front so that we can use your photos. And if you're caught in the video, it's okay for us to post them. And then we also provided you with a small review form for the conference. Those are also located on your tables. So if you happen to leave early, if you could drop those off at the front on your way out, that would be great. Um, it helps us in preparing for future conferences. And before I turn the conversation over to Dr. Wells, I wanted to give you guys a quick overview of the conference today and why we continue to put it on every year. We're gonna be hearing from a variety of different speakers, some of which who have traveled across states and across the country to be here today. This year's conference focuses on hearing about the effects of incarceration from different populations, including those who have directly experienced incarceration and those who devote their time to helping former inmates. More than anything, we hope that today helps to establish a discourse between those in attendance in one way or another. We hope that the conversation will bring forward and will continue in your lives for at least some time after we leave today. Seeing the many faces that return year after year to watch the growth in the conference and to continue to participate in this dialogue vitalizes us to push forward and grow each year. So now I'm gonna go ahead and turn the floor over to Dr. Wells. She's our PEACE faculty advisor and she's a continued support for ASU's prison education programming. And Nala, she's our advisor as well. <laughs> <laughs> So um, the very first conference we had, I was not uh, in charge of, but I did attend it. And there were 40 people meeting in a conference room uh, in the Languages and Literature building. And uh, 30 were in the room and 10 were in the hall. And the next year we doubled and the next year we doubled again. We have over 200 people registered today who will be in and out at various times. And it's just been amazing to me to um, watch this program grow and you know people ask me why I got involved with this and it was truly a chance conversation I don't have relatives in prison or friends in prison but um, once I started doing it I couldn't get out of it it you just uh, it's what you do because uh, well there's a reason and this is uh, Iron City magazine which I started with one of my students um, a couple of years after I got involved, and it just publishes work by um, prisoners and their families and prison educators. And uh, in the introduction, I kept getting asked what I, why I would do this. Why would I come up to Globe, for instance, uh, and drive all the way up there five hours up and back to teach a two-hour workshop? And there is a reason, and I think that it's really well articulated by Brian Stevenson, who is a social justice attorney, and his book, uh, Just Mercy, it's a phenomenal book. It's like one of my favorite books I've ever read, actually. Um, he writes, we are all broken by something. We have all hurt someone and have been hurt. And although our brokenness may not be equivalent, our shared brokenness connects us. And I think that that's absolutely why when we get into prison education we stay there because we are all broken and working with um, people who uh, are so much more than the labels that we put on them um, they are people first of all and we are people and I think that that humanity allows us to be more full people when we acknowledge our own brokenness and it certainly breeds empathy, and that's, that's why I do it. I hope you all have a wonderful time today. Thank you. 
Hello, I'm Nala Brewer, and I'm with the uh, School of Mathematical and Statistical Sciences, and I'm uh, Corey's co-director for the Prison Education Program. Um, as she stated, the program has grown exponentially <laughs> over the years, and so um, it's gotten so large at this point that I came in to start to learn the ropes. Um, the way that I got involved was I had originally done some outreach work um, through a church that I was going to years ago, which um, we brought in uh, classes to Tent City. And um, at the time, I had a lot of trepidation. I had no idea what to expect. Um, and then I realized after going a couple of weeks that uh, there was nothing to be fearful of. You know, they have all these rules in place. And then I got to see the, the lives that I was changing and the lives that I was touching. Um, of course, Tent City shut down. And so I'd been kind of hoping that I could find something that meaningful again. And then when our department chair sent out an, an email soliciting volunteers for prison education, I thought, oh, that's exactly what I'd want to do, because um, I like to do things that actually make a, a difference. And um, and I've been able to see, uh, by doing the prison education program, uh, the lives that we're touching. Um, I have one student that um, we brought in a number of books that were donated, math books, from one of our um, professor emeritus um, who had retired. And one of the students took it upon himself, without me even encouraging him to do this, to write a 300-page investing book to help his peers, when they get out, to manage their finances and then to be able to plan for retirement. And um, this semester, we've been able to cut, a, cut, a, cut out some of our time so that he can actually um, start teaching that. Part of our class is he teaches the investing, and then we show the mathematics behind that. The other thing that we've been able to do this year is to get a few more institutions. We have the Indian Department of Corrections um, out in Pima, Maricopa County. We have Phoenix Prison. Um, we have Lewis Prison. So now we have seven different prisons, and we're just hoping that it just Adobe. keeps and Adobe, yeah, Adobe Mountain uh, uh, for juveniles. Um, so we're just hoping that it keeps growing. And the, it, not only does it touch the, the prison inmates' lives, but I think it makes a, a lifelong impact on the students that volunteer for this. And, um, and I think we're at a tipping point in our society, so I'm really excited. I can just feel it. I can feel the momentum that people want to help people that are incarcerated to reintegrate into society, and we're going to be a part of that. So thank you very much for attending. So welcome. <clears throat> I'm, the, I'm Al Bagas. I'm the director of the School of Mathematical and Statistical Sciences, and I'm very honored to be here to address this conference. Uh, first, let me have a show of hands. How many are you out of t from out of town? Oh, quite a few. Very good, very good. Well, the weather is looking like it cooperates, so you'll be able to experience a wonderful winter Arizona day. So <laughs> welcome to all of you. Um, <clears throat> I first learned about the ASU volunteer prison education efforts uh, through Joe Lockhart and the former chair of English, uh, Mark Lucier, uh, about four, four or five years ago. Uh, they asked me if mathematics would be willing to join the effort that they had started uh, long before, and uh, uh, they quickly introduced me to Corey Wells. And uh, right from the start, I was just captivated by their enthusiasm and their energy for this program. It was really a delight to see. Um, and, and, and really, since that time, I've been a fan ever since. Uh, as we all know, education is the key to helping prisoners break out of the cycle of incarceration and prevent recidivism. Math, along with English in particular, are subjects which are crucial to the success of students not only here at Arizona State, but for the prison education program in general. Uh, I helped then to organize volunteers from our school, both uh, faculty and students, to volunteer their time in the prison, teaching subjects from developmental math all the way through calculus. Uh, one of those uh, volunteers was Nala who uh, really was a, a workhorse. She, was, she just shined above all the others in terms of her enthusiasm and her dedication to the program. And I'm very pleased to see that she's now risen to the role of co-director and helping Corey with this effort. As it grows, you need more people to get involved. So uh, Nala really uh, stepped up to the plate. 
Uh, I applaud this conference series, which is now in its eighth year, as I understand, and sponsored by the Arizona Prison Education Awareness Club and run by students. So that's, that's marvelous to get the student involvement. Uh, this conference offers the opportunity to hear from several keynote speakers. It also allows folks from across the nation who are involved in similar such volunteer efforts, both to learn from what they do, sharing what we, we know, and also to network and get to know each other. So I think that's a, a great thing. So I wish all of you a, a, a marvelous conference day and enjoy the wonderful weather. And I hope you have a wonderful time here. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Chris Ratcliffe, chair of the English department. Uh, this is my second year in Arizona. I moved here from uh, Indiana, West Lafayette, for, to be specific. It was built on a swamp. This is not a swamp. I'm learning to acclimate. Uh, <laughs> one of the things that uh, I admire about ASU is this prison education program. Um, in fact, we're trying to get it structured a little bit more so that its history, which was dependent on the kindness of strangers building this up, um, will be structured into the department so that it can go on for several years, right? Regardless of who's in charge. But speaking of who's in charge, I can't continue without saying a big thank you to Corey Wells, who has just been tireless in her uh, defense of this, not just this conference, but the program and the Penn internship, and um, the prisoners themselves. Uh, Nala, I just met, although I've heard lots about her. Um, there's a couple English faculty in the audience, Joe Lockard, who was instrumental in uh, uh, developing this program, and Ellie Van Gelderen, who's been uh, teaching in the program for many years. Um, I don't want to um, repeat anything Al said. I want to echo it, though, and say that I agree with everything he said, and I thought he gave a wonderful broad picture. Uh, but I thought it might be appropriate for me, since I'm new here and you all know more about this program, frankly, than I do, I'm learning, but uh, I'm not pretending that I'm an expert on it. I am, however, someone who's read the journal called um, Iron City Magazine, Creative Expression, Expressions by and for the Incarcerated. So what I thought I'd do is let a couple prisoners speak for themselves so that you could hear their voice. If Al's giving you the big picture, I'm going to invoke the people. So the first poem I'd like to read is The Black Crow, Crow's Soul. Because reflecting on this whole program, it strikes me that, yes, it's important that we have programs and that we have organizations, but there's also work that has to be done by the individual, and poetry helps them do that work. And I think you'll hear the echoes in, in these. So The Black Crow's Soul by Lindsay Saya. What does the black crow know of heart and soul? What sadness hides behind those lonely feathered eyes? What damaged storm churns inside his heart to make him cry? To whom does he call when he calls? Or is it a grieving song of immortal loss? How strange that for the black crow the sky grows gray. His ebony pain owns the day. His onyx beak and midnight eyes, a somber madness in disguise, a fragile spirit, just as mine. The second poem I would like to read is uh, called Dear America. I'm writing you today a lost voice from prison, lost and confused about this country we live in and the people that are in it. How do you claim to be united when there's so much division? So much division based on religion, based on our culture, our sex, and our pigment. Oh, America, how could you be so selfish and ignorant to allow a man of this nature guide us with ignorance on a path to destruction? I pray for deliverance for the colored, for the poor, for the Muslim, and the immigrant. Oh, America, oh, America, you have shown your colors. How many years in your country will my people suffer? I shed tears for my brothers, my sisters, and my mothers. The words that you utter have exploited your cover. You, America, have proven racism still exists. The leaders of your nation consist of white supremacists. There are those who follow them and those who are against. 
a war within your people, your countries at risk. I fear for you, America, but I pray that I am wrong. Sincerely yours, Emmanuel Swan. Thank you.